Hey everyone, it's Matt here with Night Run Studio and in this series we're working at making items, an inventory and ultimately a shop system. In our first video we got started by creating items but admittedly it's a little underwhelming. They have a cute little animation when you collect them. They've got scriptable objects so we can give them all sorts of stats but that's actually all they do at the moment. So next up we need to make an inventory so we actually have somewhere to store these items and inventories means user interface so in this video we're going to construct the interface for our inventory and in the following one we'll get it up and running let's get started now the core of this system is going to be a simple inventory canvas with two parts first of all you'll have a gold icon which we're going to attach a text mesh pro to that will keep track of the amount of gold we currently have we'll also have this slots game object this is just going to serve as a holder for each of our inventory slots and the slots themselves are going to have three parts. The inventory slot will just be our graphic of the square that holds the item and then inside of that we're going to have a icon which will show the item we have as well as a text for our quantity. All of this data will be populated through the item scriptable objects we created in the last video. Alright with that done let's actually get making this thing. Now our first step is to create the inventory canvas. Let's right click in the hierarchy, go to UI canvas and call it inventory canvas. All we need to do with this is click on the scaler and make sure that we've set it to scale with screen size. We need to make sure our reference resolution matches what we have in our game view. Next up, we're gonna add a UI image. This one will be called gold. And if you have an image you'd like to use, you wanna attach that now. I'm gonna use G underscore idle, which is from the tiny swords asset pack. I'm just going to double click on the gold to zoom out here and turn on my gizmo so I can see where my screen size is. You'll notice the gold is very small. We'll fix that in a moment. First of all though, let's go to our rec transform where I'm just going to anchor it to the top right corner. I'm also going to hold down option and click on the top right so that it actually pulls itself right up into that corner. At this point we can just set some margins to move it away, but no matter what screen size we're working with now, it will be anchored to this position. I'm going to go with minus 100 on the X and Y and give it a width and height of about 300. When I go to game view, that's looking about right, except that when I zoom in, I can see that it's kind of blurry. If you're having a problem like that, you just need to go into your assets folder and click on the actual sprite you're using. Here, if we take a look at our filter mode, we want to switch it from bilinear to point no filter. This gets rid of the smoothing that Unity wants to do and preserves the nice sharp edges that you want when working with pixel art. Now that we've got our gold icon, we can add our text. So let's right click in the hierarchy, go to UI and add Text Mesh Pro. If you haven't already added this, you can go to Window, Package Manager, and then make sure to get it from the Unity registry. At this point, I'm just gonna put 00 as my default text. And I kinda wanna have mine anchored down in the bottom right corner. So again, I'll go to my Rec Transform, click on the bottom right here, and then hold Option. And one more time, click the bottom right to have it suck into that corner. Before I spend too much time on adjustment, I'm going to get the text to about the size and shape that I want it to be. So I'm going to use the bangers font. We'll go with the size of about 72. I'm going to give mine a black outline with about a 0.3 size to it. And then I'm also going to just anchor all my text to the right. Now I can actually do the fine tuning of positioning. So here I'll just play with my X and Y until I get it kind of right where I want it. Now just to keep things organized, I'll rename this to amount text. We can then close up the gold and we're ready to make our slot. So let's right click on the inventory canvas and we're going to create an empty game object. I'm going to name this one slots and you'll notice right away when I click on my rec tool that it's in the center of the screen. Once again, I'm going to anchor this up to the top right. And now we can actually just drag and give it roughly the shape uh, you want your hotbar to be. We can adjust that in a little bit. Once you've got a rough idea of the size and position, we can right click on slots and add a UI image. This is gonna be our first inventory slot. And we're gonna make it a child of the slots, which is the holder for all of these slots. Now, if you want to, you can just keep it as a white box. I'm using the Tiny Sorts asset pack. So here I'm gonna use button blue nine slides as the backing for my slots. I'll then just kind of drag it up into the corner of my hotbar. The sizing doesn't matter too much as we're gonna automate it later on, but for now, I'll just kind of fill the space. And then I'm going to just look at this image here and we want to make sure that Raycast target is in fact clicked. At this point, we can right click on the inventory slot and we're going to add a UI image. This is going to be our item icon. And for now, I'm just going to grab a meat one, which is M underscore idle in the tiny swords. That's just going to be my placeholder for the moment. We can then size it up so that it fills that space appropriately. 
Now, as I size up my stake here, I notice that it is also blurry. So I just am going to click on the parent sprite here in the assets folder and make sure that I set it to point no filter. At this point, you can just sort of play with the sizing and positioning until you get it looking the way you like. All right, now next up, we want to actually have some quantity text. So let's right click on the inventory slot again, and we'll add some more text mesh pro. I'm going to call this one quantity text and then sort of rinse and repeat what we did before. I'm going to anchor it to the bottom, resize my text box, put a zero zero. I'll anchor that down into the bottom corner the way I like it and then select bangers. Once again, go with a size of 72 and then make any final adjustments so that it's actually placed about where you want it. Now at this point, I want to make this slot into a prefab. So I'm just going to go into my prefabs folder here and drag the inventory slot down inside. Now to get our slots populating here, so there's more than just one, we're going to go to the slots game object and we're going to add a grid layout component. This allows us to control the size and spacing of every item underneath the slots. So in this case of each inventory slot. Here we can set our cell size. I'm going to go with about 200 by 200. I want it to start in the upper left and we are going to go across horizontally so I can leave those settings as is. And you can see here now that when I duplicate my slots with command D, they just populate. Once they run out of room though, in my slots row, they'll start moving to the next row. You can add as many of these as you like and you can see easily here how this could become a full inventory system. That said, even getting up to five, it feels like it's taken a lot of real estate on my screen and so I'm just going to go with three. Now, if you have other UI elements also using bangers, you may have noticed that when we set the outline of our inventory quantity texts to black, it did that for every bangers piece of text we have in our scene. And if you want to fix that, here's how we can do it. You'll notice on our text that we have everything set to a material preset of the bangers SDF material. So when you make a change to one thing using this material, it will change all of them. So what we just want to do is create a new material. We can actually do this by clicking on our font asset here. This will help us find where we need to go in our assets menu. And here, if you scroll up, you can see all of the different SDF materials. I'm actually just going to grab this drop shadow one here and make a copy of it. So I'll hit command D. I can rename that to bangers SDF inventory and then click on my inventory slot. And in the quantity text, make sure that I've selected that as my preset. Now, if I make changes to this preset, it won't affect the other elements in my game. Now, since I made a change to this inventory slot, I want to apply that to all of them. So I'll go to my overrides, click apply all, and now it will change the text for all of my inventory slots. I'm going to do the same thing for my gold. Now that I've got separate material presets, I can actually go back to my other UI elements like my HP text and change its outline safely back to white without it having affect any of my inventory. All right, now I know UI really isn't the most exciting thing on earth and our items still aren't actually doing anything, but we're now set up with all of the relevant UI elements so that in the next video, we can actually get our items populating this user interface. I hope you found this one helpful. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, this is Matt with Night Run Studio. Cheers.